video is brought to you by Dr. Borai. Please press on the subscribe button and the bell icon. Hello everyone. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to show you a systematic approach of uh, interpreting the rash. Uh, this will help you in identification or diagnosis of the various types of rash and also uh, to troubleshoot some of the times when you work in the in your shop floor in the emergency department. So we see some weird and wonderful rash in the emergency department in urgent care, GP. Uh, any medical professional may come across some sort of rash. In this very systematic approach, I'm going to show you how to identify the rash. And also we'll talk about um, what are the differential diagnoses you need to consider that can affect your management. So very first question that I would like to ask uh, when I see a patient with um, some weird rash is, is the patient sick? Is the patient systemically unwell? If the patient is sick, unwell, so for example, maybe hemodynamically unstable, low blood pressure, very high heart rate, um, maybe confused, disoriented, there may be rash all over the body, looking very unwell. Now, these are the patients who uh, go to this uh, site. That is, it can be because of some infection or some drug eruptions. As you can see in this picture, this is the patient with extensive toxic epidermal necrolysis. Now, in toxic epidermal necrolysis, the patient's can be really, really unwell, and sometimes it can be some time-critical life-threatening emergency. You need to have a very good understanding about how to diagnose the toxic epidermal necrolysis or Steven Johnson syndrome. And the treatment sometimes is done in the intensive care unit or in the barn unit. They are so unwell. Let me show you another picture of uh, this patient. So this is some drug eruption. Again, this can happen as a consequence of taking some drugs, for example, in case of the uh, Steven Johnson syndrome and in case of the uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis. In case of the infection, also think about some life-threatening time critical emergencies, for example, the staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome, which can be found in case of anybody, in children, in adults, and they can have sometimes pretty bad outcome. Uh, you have heard about the uh, staphylococcal uh, scalded skin syndrome. For example, the women who are uh, uh, using tampoons that can get infected with the staphylococcus and they can develop this extensive rash. So these patients are treated aggressively with fluid resuscitation. Sometimes they need some vasopressure support, for example, adrenaline. and um, they end up uh, intensive care unit for their vasoactive support. So very first question that we need to answer is, is the patient unwell? Is the patient unstable? Is the patient very sick? If not, very next question will be, is the patient, is there any pain? If there is any pain, there are only few options we have. So it can be infection, but this is not as aggressive infection like what I have shown you earlier. This time, it is less virulent, less potent infection. For example, let me show you some pictures. So this is cellulitis. As you can see that there is erythematous skin rash, but it's localized. It is not all over the body. For example, if there is some scratch on the skin, that can get infected. And this can cause cellulitis or erysophilus. So in case of the erysophilus, there is a raised border. In case of cellulitis, there is a flat surface. In both of them, there is a clear line of demarcation between uh, the infection and the adjacent skin. Now let me show you an impetigo. Here again, there is a bit of rash, but this is for some bacterial infection. And we can treat it by some topical antibiotics or we can give some systematic antibiotics as well in some, some cases. Let me show you some other examples. This time, this is boil or folliculitis. 
So as you realize that the hair follicles sometimes can get infected and it can form these uh, boils or folliculitis. And the treatment obviously is uh, you can do either incision or drainage, removal of the hair and cleaning the hair follicle and sometimes they need antibiotics as well. We see this often, herpes simplex and herpes zoster. The herpes simplex is uh, commonly known as the cold sores and herpes zoster uh, that can appear in the form of chicken pox rash. These are some maculopapular rash, uh, very itchy and sometimes they can develop vesicles. Later in life, the same patient can develop something called shingles. In shingles, they develop the rash along the dermatome, as you can see in this picture. So this uh, gentleman has got some rash along the dermatome, very painful and itchy. And most importantly, if the patient develops vesicles, they can rupture and they can spread the herpes uh, zoster virus to others. So this is something we need to consider if we find this itchy, painful rash along the dermatomal distribution. Usually these are unilateral. So far, we have got two categories. One is that the patient is systemically unwell, uh, who need to be admitted, treated aggressively with uh, fluid resuscitation, vasoactive support. On the other hand, we have got some localized infections such as cellulitis, erysophilus, impetigo, there can be boils or folliculitis and herpes simplex, herpes zoster. These type of infections are painful. Also, there may be some oozing or there may be some a little bit of crusting or swelling. If the patient does not have the pain, swelling or oozing or crusting, then very next question is, is the rash cl in classic location? For example, if the patient has got rash in between the fingers, we think about scavis. If the patient has got rash, for example, in female, if they have got rash below the um, breast, it can be because of some fungal infection, as you can see in this picture. So we, this is a completely different territory. This is about uh, the uh, rash, which can be found in classic locations. I have got a different presentation on that topic, and we will uh, show you some charts as well. If the rash is not in the classic location, the next very important question is, is it itchy? This is very important. Invariably, this is the, this is the perception that any rash will be itchy. It is not. So we have, we have seen the very top, at the top of this chart that um, uh, at first we look at the rash can have a, in a patient who is very, very sick, very unstable. The next question is, it can be painful, it can, have, it can be located in the classic locations. If not, then this can be itchy. Now, this type of, if the, if the, if the rash is itchy, the next question is, um, what is the surface of the skin in that rash? Is it smooth or is it rough? If, it is, if, there, is some, uh, if there is smooth skin, then you have got only a couple of examples, a couple of differentials. For example, it can be some insect bite. In this case, usually there are crops of grouped papules with a central blister or a scab. And as you know, the papules are some raised lesions which are less than one centimeter in diameter. And they can be palpable when you feel the skin. So let me show you one example here. So this is um, the rash which has developed after bite by uh, a uh, bull ant in southern Australia and that can be really really itchy. Sometimes this rash uh, can be presented as a super infection. It can sometimes can get bacteria infection. Most of the time it is not infected by bacteria. It is just itchy. That's all. The other type of rash where the surface can be very smooth is arterial rash which we see all the time. So this is not anaphylaxis, but some patients with anaphylaxis can have some arterial rash as well. So when you look at the arterial rash, keep in mind that this may be the uh, dermatomal presentation of the underlying anaphylaxis. But not all arterial rash are anaphylaxis. 
So let me show you a couple of examples here. So in these patients, there is this, um, as you can see, very well-defined rash, and um, it's intensely itchy. Uh, there can be some wheels, and it develops within minutes or hours after exposure to the allergen. Um, in a patient with uh, drug allergy, food allergy, or even uh, the uh, contact dermatitis, they can develop this type of arterial rash. I know if I eat some peanuts, then I can develop extensive arterial rash. Um, arterial rash is very easy to diagnose. The very first question is, is it itchy? And if you look at the surface of the skin, and if that is very smooth, this is arterial rash. And the treatment is usually symptomatic treatment. You can give some antihistaminic medications. For example, chlorophenyramine, promethazine, or phenargan. Uh, Non-sedative antihistaminic drugs like lorat loratadine can be given. Uh, sometimes uh, you can also give some calamine lotion to reduce the itchiness. The, sur the, if, if, the, if the rash is very itchy but the surface is rough or blistered, then you have got only a few differentials. It can be scabies or it can be eczema or dermatitis. In eczema or dermatitis, the skin can be very, uh, very moist. I'll show you in a, in a second some pictures. So let me show you some pictures of uh, scabies. Now, scabies is extremely itchy. And usually this uh, itchiness appears at night. Um, probably you have heard the term seven years itch. So once the patient develop a scabies, if it is not treated, it can last for years after years after years. And they can remember that how uh, pleasant the sensation is because they suffer from a scabies. Usually, scabies can happen anywhere in the body except in the face and the scalp area. And it's very easy to diagnose. As, as you can see here, this is this erythematous rash, um, just like uh, arterial rash. However, the exceptional feature in this case is that there are some burrows. And as you can see, these burrows, it can make a huge difference. If there are burrows in, uh, between, the, uh, in between the fingers, palm of the hand, sole of the foot, in between the toes, anywhere in the body, they can have this type of rash. So it's an erythematous rash, usually quite uh, smooth. But the surface is uh, rough because of these burrows and also because of the intense itching, sometimes they can get infected. And that is about scabies. Now, scabies is very important because we don't want to miss it. If we miss the scabies, it can affect the other people whom this patient comes into contact. It is very communicable. It can spread with the clothes in the different types of furniture that the person is using. So you need to identify it. And the treatment is very simple. You use some permethrin, ivermectin. There are different options. Similarly, if the rash is extremely itchy, but the surface is rough or blistered, think about eczema or dermatitis. Usually, these are localized or sometimes it can be generalized uh, with several clinical patterns as well. As I've said, the skin can be a bit moist, and because they're itchy, um, they can get infected. And if they can get infected, that can cause secondary complications. Some, some people I have seen, they get really unwell. The treatment usually is some topical steroid with some, um, with uh, uh, usually topical steroid is good enough. Also, you can give some symptomatic treatment, for example, some, um, antihistaminic drugs, some H1 receptor blockers, for example, promethazine is a good option. Even loratadine is a good option sometimes. So that is about this question. I have shown you some examples of uh, different types of rash. Now, let's go back to the main stem. If the rash is not itchy, the next question is, is there scales? It is, if there is some scales in the rash, then you need to find out if is the is the scale is diffuse all over the rash or it is only in the periphery. If the rash is all over, that is, it is diffuse rash. You have got only a couple of uh, options. Let me show you some examples. So this is a seborrheic dermatitis. Uh, the, in this patient, as you can see, there is some salmon pink plaques, uh, which are very thin and indistinct, and um, 
and the, this type of weird type of rash that can that can uh, give some impression that this is psoriasis but this is not psoriasis this is a completely different pattern it's called seborrheic dermatitis of, of course uh, if there is diffuse scales in the rash that can be psoriasis psoriasis is usually symmetrical and these are sometimes indurated and thick and they are found for example on the extensor surfaces of the elbows or on the extensor surface of the knees and the treatment it can be different there are different options of treatment um, uh, sometimes that can get really bad on exposure to sunlight for example we'll talk about psoriasis in another video so if the rash is in the periphery on the other hand then you have got only a couple of examples let me show you some uh, examples so, so here we have got uh, tinea there are tinea is uh, a type of fungal infection and this can affect any part of the body and depending on the part of the body that is affected it, it has got different names for example it can be tinea capitis which affects the head neck area or scalp area it can be tinea cruris which affects the groin area as you can see in this picture there is a uh, infection in the groin we name for this so let me show you one picture of tinea corporis here and this is the person who has got this extensive rash mild, maybe mildly itchy but not as itchy as a scabies or dermatitis they are less itchy and uh, these patients uh, can have these scales as you can see the scale is only in the periphery not in the center not not diffusely distributed like in psoriasis the other type of rash that i would like to show you is this uh, pityriasis rosea it starts with a herald patch then oval plaques appear in the far tree pattern on the trunk very commonly found in the back on the on the back of the trunk so this is called pityriasis rosea all right so if you see the rash um, uh, which has got some scales look for the scales if you don't look for it you might miss it so look for the scales and if there is some scales find out if it is diffuse or it is if it is in the periphery then you can find out the differentials it can be seborrheic dermatitis for example this patient it can be psoriasis for example in this patient it can be tinea infection where there is peripherally located scales like this patient or it can be pityriasis rosea uh, like this patient if it is if the patient if the patient is um, not unwell if it is not painful if it is not if it is not located in the classic locations if it is not itchy and if there is no scales very last question is um, we need to we are not sure so we need to we have got some obscure diagnosis so we can do some swabbing uh, and send it to the lab sometimes i do some uh, scrapping especially in the urgent care settings or gb practices i did some uh, scrapping in the past so it's very easy to do some uh, scrapping and then send it to the lab for fungal infection biopsy may be required and also some moderate potency topical steroids or emollients can be given and of course uh, we need some help from other friends in dermatology to help us with the, the diagnosis and management of these type of patients so in summary if you find any rash very first question you need to ask is the patient sick if the patient is sick then it can be some infection for example toxic epidermal necrolysis as, uh, then it can be staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome or drug eruptions like anaphylaxis steven johnson syndrome toxic epidermal necrolysis if the patient is not sick the next question is is it painful if it is painful you have got few options like cellulitis it can be impetigo it can be boil or folliculitis it can be herpes simplex or herpes zoster if it is not painful the next question is is it in classic locations for example below the breast in case of females if not the next question is is it itchy if it is very itchy then is the surface smooth if it is smooth it can be insect bite like uh, this patient or it can be articarial rash for example in this patient if the surface is rough or blistered then it can be scabies for example in this patient or it can be eczema or dermatitis for example in this patient the very next question is if it is not itchy is there any scales is there any scale eruptions 
If there is scale eruptions, then we need to answer the question, is the scale diffusely distributed or, it, or if it is only in the periphery? If it is diffuse scales, we have got few options. It can be seboroid dermatitis or salmon pink plaque like this patient or it can be psoriasis. For example, in this patient, we have got symmetrical plaques that are indurated and distinct. If the scale is only in the periphery, then we need to find out uh, it can be tinea infection, which is symmetrical plaques that test positive for fungal infection like dermatophytes, for example, in this patient, or it can be epidiasis rosea, which is like a, it's a, like a far tree pattern on the back of the trunk, for example, in this patient. If none of these are available, then we need some help. But before that, we can do some tests. For example, we can do some swabs, some scrappings, biopsy, and uh, we can apply some topical steroids like some hydrocortisone uh, and emollients. And of course, the next step is some help from dermatology. I hope you uh, find this useful. Uh, I will send the link of this um, picture in the uh, description section of this video. Um, please use this, uh, it's very useful. I use this all the time when I struggle with a weird and wonderful rash in emergency medicine or urgent care settings. Um, if you have still any questions, please uh, feel free to ask. I am happy to answer. Um, thank you very much. And if you have not done already, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, of course, place, uh, place um, the bell icon, press the bell icon so that I can keep you updated with some new videos. Um, I've got uh, hundreds of videos on uh, skin rash, dermatology, and of course, in other aspects of emergency medicine and urgent care. Lots of, lots of um, uh, videos on ECG, blood gas, and uh, x-rays, and ultrasound. Uh, if you have got any um, questions, please uh, drop me a line. And uh, till then, I'll see you. Thank you very much.